Hello, very warm welcome. You're watching uh, Your Trace. This is Priyanka Pal along with me, Snehi. Snehi, uh, we did start it on a good note, but then we've closed nearly to levels where we opened at Absolutely. for Bank Nifty and Nifty both. In fact, marginally with gains, we've closed, but then uh, throughout the day, we, we were in a tight, narrow range only for Nifty, Bank Nifty, uh, with a biasness towards a few of the clear standout sectors like oil and gas, power. They were the clear leading sectors, power, consumer durables, oil and gas, auto to some extent also. Power sector, not just the mainstream power sector, even the power ancillary stock, the value chain stocks were also up and running today. Uh, stocks like Power Grid, NTPC, KEC, Universal Cable, mix of back from large cap, small cap and mid cap, they were in action today. And uh, oil and gas also, the same story. Just yes, one reason is the crude derivatives, all the crude derivative trades, uh, OMC stocks, paint stocks, lubricant stocks, they were in action today. But then uh, other than that, also the value chain also was working very well today. The ancillary space also was doing very well. Jindal drilling on the basis of the number zoomed in nearly 18% today. And we could see a rub off clearly on the entire pack with our stocks like Aban Offshore, Dolphin Offshore. They were also buzzing in trade today. In fact, the energy stocks, uh, especially the PSU basket, they were doing very well today. Uh, stocks like Coal India, they were also up and running today. Uh, and and then, in fact, a uh, lot of subsectors. If you talk about uh, small and mid-cap banks, also they were also uh, doing well in the trade today. Dhan Lakshmi Bank, Yes Bank, Indian Bank. Though the large-cap banks were not participating much today, and that was one reason that we did not see a bigger move on the benchmark today. But then, a lot of sectors which stood out really well today. A lot of brokerage counters, capital good counters like Everest Kanto, Grief Scott, and Igarashi Motor. They were, in fact, Valchand Nagar, who's locked again in a 5% circuit. They all were running more with more than 5% of gains today. Overall, very good day for a lot of sectors in, in, uh, involving chemical and fertilizer also. Same. Absolutely. And you know, when you mention 5% uh, stock circuit, it's difficult to not talk about Suzlon because yeah. second consecutive uh, day of gains coming in for Suzlon in that upper circuit today. Ever since the numbers have come out, stellar set of numbers in the stock has been gaining consistently but well yes you have Varun beverages that dipped on uh, the numbers that came and on the flip side Suze Long continued to hold on to those upper circuit levels. Moving on let's also talk about some other news makers in today's trading session and it was the entire earnings pack on the back of earnings reaction for all the numbers that we did see trickling in today in the middle of the market session the likes of granules. Let's pull up a granules and see what granules was up to today. Um, you had um, a good set of numbers coming in also some positive commentary coming in from the management. So there you have it, 4.2% higher is where granules has shut shop. Car trade also fabulous set of numbers coming in. On the flip side, you had numbers coming in from uh, Sapphire as well. And you have uh, Ajanta Pharma on the other hand, very good set of numbers coming in for Ajanta Pharma as well. Sapphire Foods, 1.5% higher, Ajanta Pharma almost 5% higher in today's trading session. So those were your big buzzers in today's trade. Also, New India Assurance was the one to watch out for because on the back of an ET now exclusive that my colleague Anuraksha broke earlier, that they are planning to hike the premium by 10% on nine of its insurance products. So uh, we'll um, learn about that more in detail as well over the course of the show. But well, yes, New India Assurance also a stock to watch out for started gaining in today's trading session after we uh, broke that exclusive. And well, tomorrow, uh, lots of earnings coming out for Nifty companies coming with their numbers, but eyes are going to be on auto majors and Tata Steel's to, uh, Tata Steel tomorrow for its uh, numbers coming where from the Nifty pack, you have Maruti Suzuki, m, &M. Tata Steel uh, also to watch out for and Coal India. Lots to watch out for in tomorrow's trading session, but before we head into tomorrow, let's make sense of what we saw today and for that, let me bring on board our in-house technical expert Kunal Botra coming in. Kunal, hi, thanks so much for joining us. Give us a quick sense of what we saw today because quite the volatility, not much to complain about on the flip side, but yet 25,000 so close but so far. So tell us um, by when do you think we are going to finally reach that 25,000 level? I think we should reach that in the next couple of days, but I think it's a, more of a consolidated market hmm. target which we've seen over the last three, four days. You know, even though the indices have shown a lot of strength in the last one week, we've managed to recover, uh, I don't say 950,000 odd points from the last week's low of 24,000, 30, 40 for the index. So I think in that context, it's a very good market texture which we've seen uh, developing. But then uh, I think there are some resistances which are creeping up into the indices uh, at current levels of 25,000 and 52,000 on the bank nifty. And that's why it becomes very difficult to try and sustain these kind of uh, territories on the upside. So I would probably believe that the markets could be more of range bound. 
But I think a breakout 25,000 mark is just a technical break point. Uh, you know, what matters over here is that the, if the market breadth remains strong, the large cap names continue to participate, I think there should be more trend on the upside. We also have one more concern, which is that the global markets, the global equity markets are also going through some, uh, you know, individual phases of correction, be it the likes of US indices, the European markets, as well as the emerging markets. So I think on the back of this, you might probably expect our uh, indices to show tepid kind of performances over the next couple of weeks at least. Okay, so we expecting a tepid kind of performance. In fact, that is the reason also, Kunal, we saw that heavyweights did not perform today. And maybe mm -hmm. that's what the index did not uh, significantly move up today. So what are the safe trades to look at? Small cap shined again today. Would you recommend some trades from your broader markets? Well, not venturing on small cap names, but there are formidable sectors which are looking strong. Metal sector is something which is attractive. So from the metal pack, Jindal still is something which I would recommend at current levels. The stock making a comeback for itself uh, after a... A sharp correction in the last one month or so. Buy with a target of 1040. Stop loss could be kept at 950 mark. And LNT is the other stock which I would believe is heading towards a big breakout for itself. Potentially about the new high for uh, the stock. Buy with a target of 3900. Stop loss at 3750. All right, so Kunal, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your picks with us uh, coming in LNT as well as Jindal. Still on that note, we'll let you go. Thank you so much. But let's uh, keep it going then and time now to talk about uh, the word from the wise and today that is uh, Tahir Bacha time to get some interesting opinion on the market. Earlier today we caught up with Tahir Bacha of Invesco Mutual Fund to understand the current sentiment and the key sectors that he is eyeing, what's driving his hope and what sectors he is bullish on. Let's go across and listen in. Relative value if not absolute value had started to emerge uh, uh, a few months ago and you know we were looking for some of uh, uh, the things to fall into place, like for example, the monsoon outcome, as well as uh, in terms of uh, you know our, our rural sentiments in general settling down and our rural income stabilizing. Uh, I think that is starting to uh, come through. Uh, some of it is clearly a cyclical uh, recovery, so we have to treat it as such, and uh, 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 we'll have to see whether it transforms itself into something which is more meaningful. Two wheelers was a starting point. I mean, we saw that two quarters back or three quarters back when volumes in the two wheeler space started to uh, kind of uh, move up. And generally, this has served as a reasonably decent indicator. I'm not, therefore, fully surprised that it is now starting to extend itself into some other categories as well. Uh, consumer discretionary, uh, at least uh, durables, etc., also starting to see some vigor. Okay, so relative value emerging in FMCG, what, that's what uh, word coming in from Tahir Badshah. Now we have Srishti joining in. Uh, she's got some uh, charts for us where she's uh, identified a breakout and a breakdown pattern. Srishti, is it a combination today? Well, certainly a combination today because the markets are giving moves on both the sides. First up, let's have a look at the breakout stock because you remember just yesterday we highlighted BPCL on the charts which was indeed up 5% in today's trading session and exactly similar chart is what you will see for HPCL because this particular counter has uh, is the third time testing its key resistance of 390 rupees managed to move above those levels and you will also see that after making a rounding uh, bottom sort of a pattern taking a support at this exactly move, uh, 20 day moving average the stock is on the journey upwards so this is the first stock we wish to highlight on the breakout side HPCL on the charts uh, finally touching the mark of 398 rupees other than that if we talk about one of the breakdown stocks today Excite Industries on the charts though it was indeed uh, one of the counters that was in focus on the back of the earnings but it was interesting to see that post the earnings there was not much support or, or for the stock at least and exactly a rejection coming in exactly from its 20 day moving average the stock has now um, making to feel that the the, the the trend has reversed for Excite because you will see that the stock was continuously taking support at its 20-day moving average but a while back it not just moved below those levels uh, went again back to retesting its 20-day moving average but a rejection from those levels today's move was also supported by a short bit up on the derivative side so these are the two stocks we wish to highlight on the breakout as well as on the breakdown side back to you all right, Shishri, thanks so much for taking us through that. BPCL on the breakout and Excite Industries on the breakdown side. But let's uh, move on then. And we've been 
been hearing a lot of buzz about fundraising in the markets recently, especially on the back of QIP. So let's shift focus to just that. Talk about select counters that have been in the spotlight on the back of their fundraising strategies. Slew of companies expected to conduct fundraise via QIPs in addition to the many that stand completed already. The likes of Vedanta, GSW Energy, Jupiter Wagons, etc. and more. So we have uh, Sharad joining us to give us a roundup of all the companies that have announced uh, fundraising and especially via the QIP method. Sharad. Well, there's a lot of interest is coming in the QIP space, be it the liquidity or the interest coming in from the HNIs, institutions and even FIs. Now let's look at the important QIPs which might be announced in the coming weeks, especially the first one being is Adani Energy Solutions, roughly $1 billion translates to 8400 crores of QIP issue raise, which, which is expected to happen by next week as per media reports. Also Puravankara is also ex mulling to raise almost $100 million, that's roughly 840 crores of QIP fundraise going out for the commercial assets. While also the PSU bank teams, they are also interesting picks, Bank of Maharashtra and Central Bank of India. Together they are expected to announce 7,000 crore worth of QIPs. But there are some major QIPs which have been recently completed which I like to point out. The first one being Vedanta, 8,500 crores of QIP issue has been completed. Also JSW Energy, a large amount has been coming in the month of July, almost 5,000 odd crore rupees where it was raised. And from the small cap and the mid cap space also there are certain names where Lloyd Metals raised almost 1,218 crores, while Cello World was 800 crores and also the same amount was there when it comes to Jupiter Wagons. So you can see largely a lot of of interest has been coming up and our mushrooming investment bankers have been coming across the segment when it comes to the QIP fundraise. In fact, this year we have seen a massive amount of funds coming in now through this route as compared to the previous years. Thanks, Sharad, for all that details. Let's stay for a short break here. More to come on the other side of the show. We get you the derivative action and we get you the big story of the, of the day. Hi there, welcome back. You're still watching Your Trades on ET now. Let's talk about the big story of the day and that has to be New India Assurance. Remember, it was an ET now exclusive. The company is all set to hike premiums by 10% on nine health insurance products starting 1st November this year. This moves comes, uh, move comes as a response to rising loss ratios and new IRDAI regulations. Other insurers are also planning similar hikes. My colleague Anuk Anurag Shah, who broke the story earlier, joins us for more details on this. Anurag, take it away. So going ahead, uh, uh, all of us are going to pay more for our health insurance premium because across the industry, uh, companies are planning to increase the premium and the market leader, uh, New India Assurance has uh, all set to uh, increase uh, uh, premium for their nine products uh, effective from 1st of November. So uh, now uh, New India has started to uh, send the notices for renewals uh, because from 1st of November their nine products will have a hike of 10%. So nine products are the Arogya Sanjeevani which is a standard health insurance product, New India Premier Mediclaim, Jan Arogya Bima Policy, Janta Mediclaim Policy, Senior Citizen Mediclaim Policy, New India 60 plus Mediclaim Policy, New India Top Up Mediclaim Policy, Universal Health Insurance Policy and New India Asha Kiran Policy. These are the nine policies uh, in which New India is uh, set to increase the premium by 10%. There are three other policies also, uh, New India Mediclaim, New India Family Floater and a Yuva Bharat Policy. In these three policies, uh, there is no hike happening. Uh, uh, as per our sources, other insurance players are also set to increase uh, uh, premium going ahead uh, from August, September. Uh, main reason for increase in uh, health insurance premium, one is the loss ratios in particular product and another one is the new health regulations of IRDA which got effective from uh, April 2024. So in the new health regulation, the moratorium period has been reduced from 8 years to 5 years and the uh, waiting period also got reduced from uh, uh, 48 months to uh, 36 months. So uh, these uh, things and uh, in, in considering the medical inflation also. So all these uh, things has made uh, companies to increase the health insurance premiums. Uh, if you talk about the uh, New India Assurance, and New India Assurance is the market leader in overall non-life insurance industry also and in a health insurance also. So of a total health insurance premium, 18% uh, is uh, uh, covered by the New India Assurance and uh, of New India Insurance only, of their total premium, 53% is uh, uh, through health segment only. Now, out of all uh, the entire categories that you listed out, health insurance products seems to be getting more costlier. Thanks very much, uh, Anurag, uh, for that exclusive details. Uh, 
Let's move on further. Uh, Villar states, however, signs an MOU with LNT Reality and uh, uh, synergies from this 20,000 crore BKC projects on this. We spoke to the Vice Chairman and MD uh, Shahid Balwa, who expects the demerger of the hotel business to be completed by end of FY25. He also intends to raise capital. He doesn't intend to raise capital in the foreseeable future as the company is doing well and is well capitalized. The demerger of the hotel business is on uh, in, in progress. We've already filed uh, with the, the regulators for the demerger. And we are hopeful that the demerger will be done uh, hopefully within this financial year. Well capitalized, we have uh, you know, uh, enough cash on balance sheet. Uh, we have literally no debt at, uh, at the whole co level. Uh, and we, are, uh, we don't intend to raise any capital in the foreseeable future because we hope we hope to be generating uh, substantial cash flow year on year, hopefully starting this year and going to the to, to our targeted cash flow next year. All right, we're coming in from the management of Valor Estates, but let's get a move on there and put your eye on the Nifty earnings tomorrow. Coal India, first of them, is expected to come out with its quarter one earnings. Revenue and net profit are expected to decline on a sequential basis. Ashesha is here with all the expectations and everything the street is penciling in for this Nifty major. Ashesha, take it away. Well, yes, we are expecting muted set from Coal India this time around. Lower volumes and lower e-auction premiums are expected to impact numbers on a sequential basis. Consolidated revenue for Coal India could come in at about 35,750 odd crores, which will be a decline of 4% sequentially. Margins, meanwhile, could come in at 27.5% versus 30.3% that the company had reported in the previous quarter. As I mentioned, lower volumes and lower e-auction premiums are expected to impact numbers. Lower e-auction premiums, uh, premiums were at about 66% in the previous quarter, which are expected to decline to 60% in the first quarter of FY25. Meanwhile, share of e-auction volumes is expected to rise from 11% in the previous quarter to 13% in the current quarter. Management commentary with respect to guidance for the full year, guidance on e auction prices, e-auction premiums and e-auction volumes will be crucial. But all in all, muted set of numbers expected, lower volumes and lower e-auction premiums are expected to impact numbers. Uh, that's the uh, that's a preview coming in on for Coal India. Ashisha, stay with us. Do tell us that Tata Steel is also set to release its quarter earning. However, there are uh, lower volumes which are expected to impact the numbers on a sequential basis. Uh, give us more details. Well, yes, we are expecting muted set of numbers from Tata Steel this time around. Lower consolidated volumes are expected to impact numbers, but EBITDA per ton loss for European operations is expected to narrow on a sequential basis, and that will be a positive this time. As far as numbers are concerned, consolidated revenues are expected to largely remain steady on a sequential basis, but margins could contract to 10.8% versus 11.2% that the company had reported in the previous quarter. As I mentioned, consolidated volumes volumes will be on the lower side on a sequential basis and this will be mainly on account of India operations especially after a strong seasonally strong Q4 that the company had reported. As far as India operations are concerned, EBITDA per ton is expected to decline by about 8% on a quarter on quarter basis. Steel prices were largely steady and coking coal prices were on a declining trend which will partially offset the impact of lower volumes in the quarter gone by. As far as uh, European operations are concerned, spreads are expected to narrow so the company had reported losses of about $39 per ton in the previous quarter which will narrow to $30 per ton in the first quarter. Commentary on capex on expansion plans and especially commentary on European operations and UK transition will be crucial. But all in all muted set of numbers expected from Tata Steel this time. All right, Ashesha, thanks so much for taking us through that. That's what the street is largely factoring in for Coal India as well as uh, Tata Steel. But on that note, we're completely timed out on this edition of Your Trades. Thanks so much for watching.